thing is consistency and I've ever since that's happened I've completely lost my confidence like completely you know in my head I'm always saying like I did before why aren't I good enough am I good enough why wasn't I enough you know well I think this is where narcissistic behavior comes in because it's like when you know you're in the wrong but you can easily turn it round and blame the other person then you're out of the shit and all of a sudden you've made this person who gave you the world who you know gave you your son gave you an amazing life you it's like some people need to understand how these people are real with real feelings and you have made that person feel so small right and made her feel not good enough because if you're given everything inside of you and you stick up for this person like they're your own like even after you've split up and you you constantly stick up for this person and it's still not good enough yeah yeah you th- You ready? Yep. Okay, we're rolling. Guys, welcome to the first episode. Today, I've got my friend Stefani Akristofodou in the chair with Barber. My name's Bandi Golau. Um, Let me run a quick story back, just because we'll reminisce on some memories a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, God. I, um, about 15 years ago, I was introduced by a mutual friend to two sisters. And I used to speak to them on the phone. I so know what you're about to say. <laughs> MSM Messenger. Yeah. Um, webcam chats. And they had a younger sister who used to get onto them ones as well. Get onto the camera, get onto the phone. She used to give me a bit of shit for, <laughs> just for banter. And then on the, um, that New Year's Eve, I met them in person. Um, the little sister decided she was going to chase me around the room <laughs> with, a with a chair. <laughs> And for whatever reason, whether she was going to throw it at me or hit me. Oh, my God. Either way, um, here she is. And we've been friends since. Hi. So, um, basically, we've got you on. Um, you've got a blog called First Time Mommy. Yeah. Um, which you started. How long ago did you start writing? Um, I started it in January. Just pull the mic a little bit closer. Cool. Um, and... You, your topics range between uh, personal issues you've had to deal with. Yeah. Being a single mom. Yeah. Um, mental health issues. Yeah. How you start to transform. Yes. Effects of social media. Mm-hmm. You've never been interviewed um, since some of the dramas happened. No. Um, you've had the Sun newspaper chase you around a lot. Yeah. Uh, can you talk to us, can you give us in as much detail as you wish um, how everything started up to up to now? Yeah, so basically I was in a long-term relationship with um, obviously somebody who plays football um, and we got engaged um, and I fell pregnant and um, And then uh, things started to go down south. Um, And when things started to go down south, um, I didn't think it was as bad as it was. So um, I always thought, it's okay, we'll get through it. Like, we're engaged, we've got a baby on the way, there's no way it's going to... There's no way it's going to end. And something happened between me and him um, privately. I found something out and I left the house for about two weeks. Right. Um, and one, while I was away and back living at my mom and dad's house, um, we, I was just sat on the sofa and my mom got a message from my sister, um, with a link to the Sun newspaper. Okay. Um, my mom was like, oh my God. And I was like, what? And she said, you're going to be the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. Right. And I was like, what? So I didn't know what it was. I didn't. I'd, I thought there's no way it can be what we fell out about because okay. I didn't think anybody knew about it. Okay. Um, and we'd obviously sorted it ourselves. I just wanted some time away. Okay. Um, so obviously I've read through the link and it was what I thought it would be. Um, so, so you had an idea? I had an idea, yeah, I okay. already knew. Um, and that was basically the start of the turmoil that I had to go through. Um, after that, um, we did decide to try and make it work. Um, I, 
I think looking back now, I was more scared of being alone than actually thinking it could work. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that was the start of the newspapers and it carried on and on and on. So, um, so up until the newspapers, yeah. how, when you said, because you said that you thought things were, weren't as bad as yeah. they were. Yeah. Now looking back with a smarter head and experience and understanding, how right were you? It's hard because I think when you're, when you've recently got engaged and you're pregnant, yeah. it's hard to put yourself in a single person's shoes and see it from that side. So right. I think if the situation was where I wasn't pregnant, I think it would have been like, okay, red flag has come up, you know, r- rethink about this. Right. But because obviously being Greek, you know, uh, kind of even being pregnant before marriage is right. a is a situation, right. you know how it is. Um, it was like in my head, I was just thinking, you need to sort this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's no way that this is going to be the end. Um, yeah. So looking back now, I think I would have cha- I would have changed a few things in the sense that I wouldn't have been so needy to him. I wouldn't have made out that I needed him so much. I think that was his job. Okay. Um, and yeah, but um, it it would I change everything? Probably not because. At in that moment of time, that's how I knew how to deal with it and do, in my situation. Do you feel that given the situation you're in now when you're not together, yeah. the, red, the red flags that you saw early on, you would have just called it quits then instead of having to go through more drama? Red flags as in? As in, so you said that you'd seen some things that you would call a red flag. Yeah. And then you tried to hold on and fix it and obviously it didn't it didn't work out yeah so looking back would you have called it quits at the first red flags that you saw so yeah right so we've um there was a few red flags before we even got engaged okay so um and we did previously split up a long time ago okay. um and the difference with that breakup to this one was that I wasn't pregnant, we weren't right. engaged, there was no major attachments. So I could do what a normal girl does when they break up, get dressed up, go out with your friends, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have fun, yeah, yeah. go on holiday. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got responsibilities, yeah, yeah. I've got a child to yeah, yeah. raise. Um, I'm in no position to start even thinking about dating anybody else. I don't even have time for myself to even be able to give time right. to anybody else. Right. Um, so... Um, then obviously that got, he, because I'd kind of moved on myself, then he came back on his own. Okay. And then that's kind of when things were like, he obviously came back more serious and kind of gave me the life that I wanted to have in terms of, I wanted a committed relationship. I wasn't right. a joke. I didn't want to be messed around. I don't want to kind of be in this public relationship and yeah, not yeah. know where I'm going. Yeah. Um, in my eyes, if I'm with somebody it means that I could potentially marry the person. For I'm sure. not with somebody yeah, yeah. for fun. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, obviously, you want it to be fun, but, you know, not just yeah, for... Yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. Um, but, yeah, so if those red flags happened then, then definitely I would have left. But, right. obviously, within the situation that I was in, it's hard to... I don't want to just turn around and say, oh, yeah, I definitely would have left because I probably wouldn't have right. been in the situation right. that I was in. Do you feel like when he came back the second time yeah he was serious or do you feel like it was just because you were playing you were playing it harder to get not hard to get do but you, know you know what i wasn't even playing hard to get i no. genuinely thought i'd moved on yeah so that was my fault i worded it wrong what i'm saying is because of that do you think like he thought because you've moved on he's got to change do you think like it was he he was trying to bring you back just so he's got you and then he was gonna do what he was gonna do not really not really um because obviously from that moment we were together for like 
three years. Right. And we had, even though we've had the worst times, we've also had the best times. Right. Um, and when we were together for those three years from that period to obviously the breakup, in my eyes, 80% of the relationship was amazing. Okay. You know, we lived together. We had a really good time. We were best friends as well as obviously being in a relationship. So, no, I don't think okay. that was the case. Does does your ex read the blogs? He has done, yeah. All of them? I don't think all of them. I know he's read a few. Um, some he's been like, yeah, that's amazing. And others, obviously, for obvious reasons, he hasn't liked very much. Okay. So does he talk to you about them when, when he reads them? No, he will just read them. And I think that was it. I know that he's read a few because he's told me he's read one or two. Okay. I think the Sun newspaper one, he was like, oh, you know, somebody had to say something because I've, I'm thinking like I've been through that, but he always goes through that. Right. So obviously he can obviously relate to what I was saying. Okay. Um, but he did read one in particular, which I actually deleted because. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Why? Um, because I think I, with my blogs, I think I'm trying to get out a message to help people, but I think I wrote one in pure anger, which wasn't really helping anybody, but just attacking him. Okay. And that's the one he obviously didn't appreciate, even though I felt like I didn't write anything that was out of line. Right. But I just deleted it anyway. Okay. How many people read it? <laughs> Quite a few. Right. But it did get deleted. You're on number 20 now. What number was that? Uh, I think it was 18 or 19. It wasn't that long ago, but obviously it's been replaced by something else now. Okay. So the few that I've read yet, I think know which one I'm talking about. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was a bit late reading them. So yeah, I, I think saw. you missed that one. Okay. Um, you seem very back and forth yeah. with him. Yes. In terms of the way you feel yeah. towards him. Yeah. What's, what's the score now? Oh, what's the score now? Um, right now, we're not talking. Okay. Um, I feel like we get into this cycle. So, um, obviously, ultimately, we have to speak for our son. Yeah. So, in, I think the problem where I get, like, what up, I do is I think that everybody's got my heart and they don't. So when we get on, I just think, oh, okay, like things are going really well. We can actually still have a friendship um, for our son. Right. And and when we do get on, it's really, really good. Um, but then I think the problem between me and him is that I am a really honest and straight up person. And I like to talk about my feelings, obviously, my blogs. Right. Um, but he doesn't. He runs okay. away from problems. So if I, if he lies about something, which he does quite a lot... And I caught, catch him red-handed. My reaction to his mistakes, he can't take that and he'll just run off. Okay. So obviously you call him out on his shit and he doesn't yes. like it. Yes, yeah. So do you feel like it should just be business in the sense of you do what you do for your son mm. and then don't bother trying to better it anymore because this is going to keep circling around yeah I, do, I have thought that in the past but I think my problem is is that I'm probably in a weird way I'm probably still in love with him right do, uh, and that's my issue you've obviously got a lot of patience than me because I would just sort of say go fuck yourself <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean do you know what though like I think you know the type of person I am in an, a lot of situations I would be the same and I have been yeah, the yeah, same yeah. Yeah, yeah. but when you have a baby with somebody yeah, I, the I emotion that and the, sh the bond only gets deeper right right um and it's it's a hard one because the best thing in my life right now is my son and he shares half of that with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like trying to move on from somebody that you've been in love with, it, but you still need to communicate with on a daily basis is probably the hardest thing in yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I get that. Um. So, yeah. Do it, you it, do you not feel like you can you can pull away? Um, I definitely know that I deserve better. Right. And I'm definitely aware that 
I'm too good for him and not in a big headed way. I know what you mean. I just think like I've given him so many chances, you know, and I gave him all of myself. Right. And I think when that's not enough, then it's like the the first thing you do is like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. How How is it that I, you know, I'm raising your son and I'm still not good enough. And that's a battle that I have to go through quite a lot. Right. Um, but, I am good enough, but I'm too good. But but then you're seeing yourself through his eyes a lot of the time. Yeah. Which is yeah. Which is a mistake. Yeah. Because he's never gonna uh, he's never gonna see you how you're meant to see yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Did Did you know, like, so you'll know a lot of people won't know that I'm not um, I'm a martial arts guy. I don't follow football. Mm-hmm. So. When I was told that you were in a relationship with this person, yeah, obviously through media or whatever, he's got a bad reputation. Yeah, has done for years. Mm-hmm. And when I was told that you were in this relationship with this person, which I had no idea about, yeah, people also told me the way that he's portrayed, rightly or wrongly, through football through the media did you know what you were getting yourself into um do you know what when I first met him we literally met completely random I didn't even know who he was when I first met him okay um we started off purely as friends um I think he had feelings for me and I didn't I would actually go to him about issues about another guy that's how it started off (laughs) I know ironic um but um All I can say is that I do think he is unfairly portrayed in the newspaper. Obviously, at the end of the day, you do really know somebody when you live with them. And um, yeah, he's done shit things to me and whatever. But a lot of the things that do come out in the media, I'm not going to say aren't correct because everybody has an opinion, but I don't think um, they're fair. Okay. So... When I was told about him, I thought, you know what? Steph's a friend of ours. I'll make my opinion on him Mm -hmm. when I meet him. Yeah. I'd seen him at a few events. We'd never actually, we'd never actually spoke. Um, The few events that I saw him at, he, he was very quiet. He didn't really say much. So I couldn't really form an opinion on him. Yeah. I didn't form my opinion on him until we were at your um, engagement party. Mm-hmm. And then red flags constantly. Okay, why? Um, put it this way. I told my two best friends, which obviously you know well, that, yeah. were, that were also there. Yeah. These were my words, and I've never told you this before, but I'll tell you now. I said to them after the event, if these two get as far as a wedding, I probably won't go. Okay. Because the arrogance was overwhelming. The ego was overwhelming. Mm. And I felt like it was his party and you were the accessory. Mm. Do you know what it is? that I do understand your opinion on that. I do, because I was a little bit annoyed with him that night. But... Obviously, I was pregnant and I couldn't drink and I couldn't get really involved in the party. But we're forgetting that these footballers don't go out a lot. So, um, Sido, get, oh, I just mentioned his name. Okay, sorry. Um, he, um, he gets excited when he goes out and he's a proper family person and obviously he'd formed relationships with my family and obviously his family was there he just got over over excited at the time he was going through a little bit of a rubbish time with football in general and it was kind of like a bit of a break but I do definitely understand your opinion um because I was also annoyed that night but I don't I didn't take that 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 to heart too much because I I know how he is right so Obviously, the difference was because you already knew him, you'd see it differently to how I saw it. Yeah. Because I didn't, didn't know, know him. him. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So my first real kind of 
exposure to this guy yeah was that yeah and i thought oh fuck she's in for a problem yeah i wouldn't even call it arrogance with him a lot he's, he's been called arrogant a lot and i don't think that's a word to use for him at all i don't think he's arrogant i think he um he's definitely misunderstood um arrogant <laughs> It's a weird one because he's super, super down to earth. He is when he's like he's uh, when he's at home and around his family and whatever. And like you say, he is quite quiet if you don't know him. But he does get like overexcited and he does like a party. I thought there was a lot of people there and I thought the spotlight was on him and he just... Loved it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but to a to a a, a strange a strange level because i felt like you got shadowed that night yeah and i thought well obviously if i ever get to a stage of an engagement even though it's going to be a big deal to me it's like the girl's day it's more of a girl's day yeah yeah no i do know what you're saying but i didn't take that as anything bad i just took it as like do you know what? He's really enjoying himself and he deserves it and blah, blah, blah. Like, I definitely enjoyed myself as well, but I couldn't fully enjoy myself because I was three months pregnant at the time and right. nobody knew as well. Right. So it was like, I was trying to, a lot of people were like, why aren't you drinking? So I was like holding a champagne glass and like pretending to sit. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so I was kind of on edge anyway, but I just, I took it as like, Oh, he's enjoying himself. It's okay. Like he deserves a good a good night, and it was both our party, not just mine. Um, so it wasn't like a massive deal, but I do understand okay. what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Um, on Valentine's Day, you wrote yeah. number seven of your blogs called "Strip Back." Mm-hmm. Bittersweet um, memories you love with that guy. Yeah. Um sour with what's happened um being single that kind of stuff yeah you you put a quote which i'll read to you which um i found interesting you put that you can't settle for less after experiencing what you had with him yeah do you feel like you're setting yourself up for a lot of unhappiness with that kind of that kind of thought say it to me again so, the quote was, where are we? Bear in mind, I did write this blog when I was like full on tears. Yeah, yeah. Everything, it, like Bridget it. Moans, <laughs> Bridget Jones moment, right. yeah. So, you said you can't settle for less after experiencing what you had with him. Okay. So, i known you for known you for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. I um, know that you and your family have done well so a lot of people that don't know you may have said uh she's with him because of the status and the money and this and that Mm -hmm. which i don't believe is true yeah because i know you yeah but um i have i have a theory on not just your situation but a lot of similar situations where um girls are with guys who have got a certain amount of income Mm -hmm. so when was it 2013 me and you went to Dubai for the first time yeah with some friends and we were all on a budget we flew economy then you went first class with him yes right so I feel like in, in a relationship you kind of you build a connection and you build bonds based on memories which develops into love yeah the difference between an average income earner and a high income earner yeah is that they can provide a lifestyle yeah which you can enjoy more and then your memories can develop into a stronger bond so for example like if i was going to take a girl first class anywhere i think it'd be a bigger deal to me because it would cost me more yeah than no, it I would see what cost him yeah do you understand yeah so people like that can potentially do that with anybody right yeah 
And he doesn't mean much. Yeah. Okay. It means a lot more to you than it does to him. Yeah. Whereas the average income earner um, who doesn't generally do that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. it'll mean as much to us as it would to the girl. So do you feel like that kind of lifestyle is what built up the memories which now have got you feeling like you do? No. Right. I don't think at any point did um, kind of like the luxury side of things make things any better Um, because we've had loads of memories that Joe walking past could do with his girlfriend. Do you see what I mean? Um, At no point was it that, oh, well, you know, the memory's not going to be so good because we're not um, at the best hotel in the world. Like, no, I I think it's more about the people. And um, like, I'm going back to how he's portrayed um he is he's not he's not how do i say it he is quite normal in the sense that yeah okay he can afford to go business class or whatever but it he's more than happy to go economy right do you see what i mean it's not like oh i have to go business class and i have to upload it that i'm in business class it's just purely because he can afford it and and that's what it is but at no point would it make the memories any better or any sweeter because of that reason do you feel like um because this kind of stuff you can get into the best hotels and the best restaurants and the best locations and that stuff do you not feel like, so again, for the average income earner, what, if he likes a girl enough, he'll do, he'll go that extra mile. Right. Whereas a high income earner, he could, what he can do with you, he can do with the next girl and the next girl. Do you feel like they, they can use that tactically to gain the, response from girls that they want oh 100 percent. but i don't that didn't work with me do you not feel like that's that was part of the plan to get me or yeah or 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 the other girls as well no because at no point did i go for him because of his income no 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 i'm not saying it like that but what i'm saying is um so you like the guy obviously to get there in the first place Mm -hmm. but then do you feel like the bonds were built better through that do you know what i mean do you understand what i'm saying i do understand what you're saying but no but not for you but do you do you think for other girls oh 100 percent. you like it it, it's easy do you know what i mean if if you're kind of into a guy that's a high income earner and you feed his ego because he's splashing the cash at you, then a hundred percent, that's the easiest thing. But that then at some point that's going to phase, phase out as quick as it faded in. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, for me, it was absolutely not. I preferred the times we'd stay at home and watch Netflix. Do right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than, so get me wrong, holidays were incredible, but uh, I, I think my top three memories aren't even a holiday. Right. So, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. for other girls, 100%, it would... I think um, there is a lot of girls today, especially um, with the whole social media thing, that do go for a type of person to have this kind of lifestyle. And as much as it's nice to have a nice lifestyle, it's going to catch up on you, like, in the end, if you're not fully in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You have to, like, to- like totally be in love with person, in love with the person for them and not for what they can provide you for sure um i think sometimes uh people try and squeeze as much out of something as they can yeah um which is a danger for the girls and it's a danger for the guys doing it as well because yeah it is hard for them it's like well when when i think when they're looking for something serious it gets start, starts to get hard because it's like oh well who's who's real who's not yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean but then when they kind of want to go on a mad one or whatever they can pick anybody up who they want like which is what he's currently I don't know 
the, the person he's currently with now has always been around in the background and she and from what I've heard and from what I've seen and from what I know which what I've experienced with this person is that if he was on an average income there is no way she would be around a hundred percent not yeah. and and that's fine for when you're not fully into something because it, it's like well I have got that and I can keep her for as long as I want her right but obviously she's um she's probably not in it in the way that you were in it well i can't say because i'm not her but my guesses are no because a lot of them aren't um, no. it's an impulse thing more than anything um number 18 yeah uh know your worth yes you said the right person won't consistently do you wrong yeah what do you what do you expect or what what do you feel like you need now going through a bad relationship um it's hard because i think as well when i've got the baby it's like it's not just me anymore it's him as well so right now if i didn't have Gosta, if he wasn't involved i would just i think the most important thing is consistency and i've Ever since that's happened, I've completely lost my confidence, like completely, you know, in my head. I'm always saying, like I did before, why aren't I good enough? Am I good enough? Why wasn't I enough? You know, um, so I think consistency is a big thing. Um, and uh, friendship, like a solid friendship is really important. Right. Um, and communication, like that's where we went wrong, like you have to talk about the problems and take each other's opinions. And it's not like you're not in a relationship against each other. It's not an opinion to argue. It's an opinion to make you stronger. Um, and I think if somebody is scared of communication and scared of um, kind of any, like any form of uh, conflict or any form of whatever it is that you're going through, then if you can't deal with the little things, you're never going to be able to deal with the, the bigger things. Sure. And I like to talk about things and I like to just iron it out and we can move on from it. You know where you're at. Yeah. But when there's another, when there's somebody else involved in the, in the relationship that doesn't like to communicate, then that's when your head starts going crazy thinking, well, whatever, uh, you know, what have I done? What have I done? And the phone, like, oh, I'm just one of those crazy girls that will just not stop calling <laughs> until I get an answer. Right. So I will fully leave okay. you 50 missed calls on your right. on your phone right. until I get an answer. But obviously, see, I'm the kind of person as well where whether it's a relationship, a friendship, whoever I know and however well I know them, I like people to know where they stand with me. Yeah, but if, I think that's maturity. Yeah. But I, I feel like every relationship needs that. Yeah, 100%. Because if you're, whether you like to communicate, and I've been through situations where somebody didn't like to communicate and express themselves like I did. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be in a relationship, like it or not, that's what you've got to do. 100%. And I think that a lot of the time, relationships go wrong because of those reasons like I don't give a fuck if you don't like to talk about how you feel yeah I need to know yeah it's the foundation of a relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. now yeah, yeah. yeah so I think that um that their principles that you have to find in a person um because sometimes you could get to know somebody in just at arm's length and they they don't like to um, express themselves. They don't like to communicate. And then getting further will only make it worse. Yeah, I think it, in general, like the communication was fine, but it was only when things got a little bit hard. And it, and I think especially this kind of comes up in males more than females that when stuff gets hard, it's the easiest thing to do is to run away. I don't right. have to communicate. I don't have to do this. I don't yeah, yeah. have to do that. But I feel like that's more paranoia than anything. Because I'm, I'm one of these guys where, not to say that I don't do things wrong, but if I do something wrong, it wouldn't be intentional. And um, I'm very, very secure to kind of own up to my shit. Yeah. I feel like if you're shying away, you know you're wrong. Yeah, 100%. So, so 
But then, but then there, there's another thing admitting your wrongs as well. I think and this is where narcissistic behavior comes in because it's like when you know you're in the wrong, but you can easily turn it round and blame the other person, then you're out of the shit. And all of a sudden you've made this person who gave you the world, who, you know, gave you your son, gave you an amazing life. You, It's like some people need to understand how these people are real with real feelings and you have made that person feel so small right. and made her feel not good enough because if you've given everything inside of you and you stick up for this person like they're your own, like even after you've split up and you, you constantly stick up for this person and it's still not good enough, yeah, yeah. You, you start to think, well, this is crazy. Like, can you not own up to anything at all? It's um, it's It's a scary amount of insecurity and... It's um, selfishness as well. Yeah. Because in their world, it's all about them. Yeah. There is no room for a second but person. But I do, I'm a strong believer in, you know, when the lights go off and you're alone in bed, if you've, everybody's got a conscience, yeah, there is sure. no way you're not going to be sat there thinking, what the hell have I done? For sure. But again, like we said, having the balls to own up to it is yeah. a different story. Yeah. And for that reason, a lot of people will live a life where they are unhappy. What you see day to day and what you said, like what you see when the lights go off or Mm -hmm. what they see themselves are two very different things, but they are willing to live a life of unhappiness just so they don't have to admit to themselves that they're a problem. Yeah, well, yeah. But you're a problem to yourself. and, And I think that's been an issue for me as well. And right in the blogs like like you say like there is some days where I feel super positive and I like to help people but then there are definitely those days where I'm just like I don't know I don't know what I'm doing with my life like I don't feel good in any area I don't feel good in myself I don't feel good in my work I don't feel good as a mom and nobody knows what you're going through because as much as I express my feelings through blogs I'm kind of bad at expressing my feelings to people right like yeah sometimes yeah. with the blogs it's almost it's like it yeah and it's like you're writing like just for yourself right yeah yeah, yeah? yeah. so um and it's easy to write it send it out and then that's you know that's it you're done but when you write when you're actually speaking to people that know you parents sisters family whatever and somebody said something that doesn't click in with your head all of a sudden it's boom your insecurities are all up again yeah yeah. um and it's hard to get away from it is really hard everybody has shit days though i think um that's something that a lot of people have to bear in mind i think people i feel like there's what i call fake mental health oh yeah and so somebody might have a bad day not to say that yours was fake. I know yours wasn't, but mm-hmm. somebody might have a bad day or they're a bit anxious and they're like, oh my God, I've got anxiety. Yeah. I've got mental yeah. health. Because yeah. now it's so often spoken about and so th- yeah. thrown about mm-hmm. that anybody having a shit day feels like they've got mental health issues. It's like, yeah. no, you're just having a shit day. Yeah. Everybody, even the guys living the best lives in the world have shit days. Of course, yeah. So I think that telling yourself that it's okay to have a shit day is 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 something that you know you should you should bear in mind like you're not going to feel amazing every day i don't yeah. feel amazing i'm currently the happiest i've ever been but i don't have every day is not a great day for me yeah 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 Do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean yeah but i don't think you should be beating yourself up on on a shit day because mm-hmm. you've got more responsibilities than i've got just by having a kid yeah you know? But I think that's what I think as well. That's what it is, is like when you've been through the worst, like when I obviously got to the point where I actually was considering to end my life. Um, when I think when you get to that place um, and you've finally come out of it, like, yeah, okay, I absolutely do not have those thoughts in my head at all anymore, which thank God, literally right. thank God. Thank God yeah. um, when you do have a shit day, you kind of um, beat yourself up because you're like, why wh- Why am I having this shit day again? Like, you're so, um, like, what's the word? You're so um, 
concentrating on getting better that when you have a bad day you're kind of you're going backwards yeah and and that's the problem where i've got where i'm like it's okay it's not a straight path you know there is there is highs and there's lows but you're still going forward um so that's definitely something i need to keep reminding myself but it is hard because a lot of the time I don't have any time for myself. Um, I feel really lonely. Um, I could be in a crowd of 2,000 people and I still feel alone. Um, and Again, I think everybody's been there. Yeah. I just don't think... And we all speak about it, but everybody's been there. I've been there. Yeah. Um, it's hard because I wrote a piece on my Instagram a while back and I said that... Um, when you're in rooms packed of people and everybody, probably most people, a lot of people are in the same boat, but nobody knows. Mm -hmm. They think they're the only ones in it, right? Because nobody's got the balls to fucking speak out and say, look, this is how I feel. Yeah. So you feel like you're the only one in that 2,000 people, but the reality is at least a thousand of them are in the exact same boat as you and yeah. you've got no idea and nor have they. Yeah. And since writing my blogs, I and honestly cannot believe the amount of girls that I've opened up and that are in such similar positions to mine. And I'm just like, oh, so I wasn't alone then. You know, mm. every, when I think back, when I literally didn't leave the house for five months and I was purely just in bed, um, you know, there was days I didn't even eat and I was pregnant. Um, and I look back and I think, if only I wrote the blogs then, would I right. have been as in a bad position than I was? You know, um, and I wish I did it back then. And I think it would have helped me um, a lot. But, you know, everything happens for a yeah, reason. And there's a reason the, why I... You don't have the strength back then. No, uh, and that's it. And I think you have to wait until you do get the strength to kind of speak out. It's yeah. not easy to speak out when you're fully going through yeah. it. I, I think uh, the voices in your head, not just yours, in, in all of our heads are very... Um, oh. they're, they're scary because they can isolate you and make you feel like... Um, you're in this fucking you're in this cage alone and actually all it is is just the way that you think and obviously I know that you've um, you've watched like a lot of Tony Robbins and people Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. and watching these motivational stuff really makes you realise that it's just the way that you think yeah of course and I think it's fascinating I live a much better life now just in myself knowing these kind of things that I started realizing from years before yeah that if you change the way you think your whole life changes yeah and it's not even cliche it's fucking it's It's true real real stuff but I think the problem with that is I think when people go through what they're going through people and I've mentioned this in my blog before that people want a quick fix like right. they want to, yeah, yeah, they yeah. want to read something and they want to see something and they just want their, oh, okay, I've changed my mind now. I want my life to be better, but it doesn't work no, like no, that. No, no. It takes a while. This is why, um, oh, what's that? The law of attraction. Yeah. I feel is kind of bullshit. Okay. Kind of. Like, I think there's definitely elements of truth to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when people are like, oh, just think um, of a Porsche and it will turn up on your drive yeah just yeah, just yeah. just think you're going to be successful and you keep thinking it it's going to happen but if you sit on your ass at home of course it's not going to happen you yeah. have to take steps and um another thing that people have mentioned before which is really true is people all talk about um so-and-so was an overnight success no one was an overnight success yeah it was just what you saw yeah might have seemed overnight Mm -hmm. but that person's been doing it for years yeah and whether it's a business or whether it's um your state of mind it's little steps like you said it's little steps forward Mm -hmm. you may come back a bit but it's a it's a long process yeah as long as it's a step forward it's good it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how far forward yeah but there is no there is no reading a book and all of a sudden all, you, all your problems change. Because mm-hmm. I think you have to be willing to look in the mirror and face some problems. Yeah. Which 
is the hardest thing to do. Yeah. I think telling yourself you've got a problem and telling yourself that it's not going to get fixed overnight is the hardest thing to do because it's like, well, am I gonna ha- can, what's the point in waking up this morning? Right, which, what, is, which, the, is, which is scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that the worst thing in the world anybody can do, and again, I've done it, and I still do it, just not hardly as much as I used to, is doubt yourself. Anytime you doubt yourself, you're fighting a losing battle against yourself. But we'd also live in a world that, and we spoke about this as well, that especially with social media, everybody on social media is hashtag living their best life. Yeah. Everybody on social media is, you know, doing something that, you think is better than you, but it, it's not. Obviously, it's just everyone on their Instagram, on their Facebook, is showing the highlights of their life. Yeah, yeah, Nobody's yeah. out there, you know, uploading a selfie with no makeup on and not, you know, and if couldn't get out of bed today and, and whatever. If they are, you don't want to see it. Well, yeah, but and I think that's the problem that we are comparing our lives to everybody, but you don't actually know what that person's going through. Like I got a message not so long ago off a girl and she said to me just by looking at your Instagram I would never ever assume you've been through what you've been through and I said why I said because my, I've got my hair's brushed and I've got yeah fake lashes but, on and I've got and I'm going out and I'm having a drink does that mean I can't suffer from mental health yeah because, you're just seeing the, the better parts of me you're seeing the days where I have decided to wake up and I want to go out and I wanted to take a picture uh, but obviously also I know you do it and I do it and everybody does it. People post throwbacks. I, if if you posted a picture now of three years ago and you didn't tell me, I wouldn't know it was three years ago. Yeah, of course. But we're looking at still images. There might be 50 posts, 100 posts on your profile of still images. You can't gain anything from that still image. But that means that I'm living my best life and which is why I keep telling people like stop comparing your life to somebody's highlights. Yeah, Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Because the amount of people that I know that I have reached out to me and I'm like, wow, like I actually had no idea yeah. I had no yeah, idea yeah. whatsoever, yeah. but they don't obviously tell anybody. They they told me because they felt they could because of yeah. my blogs and whatever, and I wouldn't tell anybody at all. But it is scary at how you could be having a conversation and a laugh with somebody one day and the next day they've ended their life and you never know. Yeah, for sure. You absolutely never know. It actually happened, um, scarily enough, my sister showed me um, a picture of somebody yesterday or the day before uh, someone in our local town that had um, I don't know if he committed suicide I think that's what they said but I'm not sure but he was a lot younger than me um, probably early 20s and I used to see I didn't know him but I used to see him in the gym Mm. I'm talking the last time I saw him in the gym maybe at a push was about a month ago right and I'd laugh every time I'd see him because he'd be doing his weights and they'd have the, the tunes blasting on in the gym and he'd be like dancing in the mirror. Like full of along, life. Just really, I go to the gym. I don't really enjoy being at the gym. I just do it because I, I need to do it. Yeah, yeah. But he looked like he was really enjoying himself. Yeah. And she showed me the picture of this this kid that died. And I was like, oh, fuck. The, he looked like he was having the best time in the gym. Mm-hmm. Out of everybody in the gym, if you could say to me, who in this gym loves being here the most, I'd say it was that guy. Mm. And you've got no idea, which is fucking terrifying. And that's, I think, life is so short, it's scary. And there's been times where I've watched a film, for example, and that's basically the underlying message behind the film. Life is short, you know, blah, blah. And in times when I'm like that, because I'm an emotional person, I will reach out to obviously him, the the baby's dad. And I'll just say like, look, like we, all I want is for us to get on. All I want is for us to have an easy life. Like all I want is the respect I so freely give to you. All I want is for us to be a team for my son. Like that's it. That's all I want. And when I don't get that back, I'm just like, 
I don't understand. Like I'm, I'm sat there going, how can you, how can you have gone from wanting me to be your wife, you know, from me giving you everything to you don't even exist in my world anymore. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. does that even yeah, happen? Yeah, yeah. How? And what if tomorrow that tragically, you know, God forbid, yeah, yeah. something happened to me, yeah. and then and then what? Would you regret your decisions? Yeah, sure. But I know for a fact, because I've got a conscience, if God forbid again, something did happen to him tomorrow, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be like, well, what if? Because I did everything I possibly yeah, yeah. could. Yeah, yeah. And ev- I, I support him still. I and this is why a lot of people don't understand me. I still support him. I still, you know, try and do as much as I can. My phone's always on. If he ever calls me and he's upset, like he has done in the past and he's spoken about things, I'm there. If I ever need to do anything for him, he knows that I'd do it. Because that's not because um I'm trying to get him back. That's just because deep down in my heart I still love you. Yeah, yeah. And I will do that yeah, to yeah. anybody that I love. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't shut people out yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and and that's just it is. We're all completely different, but I do live my life knowing that I have got a conscience, and if anything happened tomorrow, at least the people that I love know that I love them. Yeah, for sure. I think there's only there's only so much you can do. I know that after doing so much for so long, people do decide that they're going to stop, which is understandable, but as long as you can say you've done you know. the best you can, yeah. then you can't be angry at yourself afterwards. Yeah, no. But, I think I'm angry that I've done too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at, at the, this point, but at the end of the day, um, I've been there where I feel like I've tried my best. It's not good enough. Mm. It is what it is, you know. Fuck it. But nobody can ever turn around to me and say you didn't do enough. Yeah, nobody could do, you know do that I mean? to me either. Absolutely not. And I feel like not just relationship wise, but business and everything else this is the way that I try and live now where I squeeze as much out of it as I can. Mm -hmm. Like this, for instance, my mentality is if I fall on my face and fail, I do, but fuck it, I'm going to try. Yeah. Because I think the worst thing in the world is not trying. Mm -hmm. But if you always doubt yourself, you never seem to be able to put all of it in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'll never get the best out of a situation if you keep doubting yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely an issue with mine, 100%. But it's not... Again, you can't blame yourself because there's been outside factors that have caused yeah. that. Mm-hmm. You know, if if we were sheltered and every single thing that we ever go through worked out in our favour, in our heads we'd be unstoppable. Yeah. But that's... It's false. Yeah. And and you need... You need some bad shit to happen to build you and shape you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I'm a strong believer of that, you know, it, and you do get stronger, but it, the, and and it's a horrible cliche just as, as time's a healer, which is a horrible cliche, but it's very true that we do need to go through bad things to make you stronger and it 100% will, but nobody wants to hear that when you're going through it. Yeah. In your mind, you're like, why me? Yeah, why yeah. do I have to go through yeah. this? I've got two sisters that have got the most perfect life. You know, they're married, they've got their kids, they did everything the, the correct way. And, they might have their problems, but I see it as they've got the perfect life. Right, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because I see it as you, I different. envy your yeah, life. Yeah, for sure. You know, you've got sure. your kids have got a dad to go home to at night. Right. Your kids, you know, have, when it comes to Father's Day, they've got their dad. Yeah, yeah. Mine didn't, and yeah. I cried on Father's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I saw my nieces and my nephews you know, with their dad and just how I did. They were, I, I was never not with my dad on Father's yeah, Day. Yeah. And the fact that my son doesn't have it and I'm just so not used to this life, I just feel, I just sometimes I don't even recognize, recognize myself because I'm like, I'm, I'm in like a different world. I don't know how to do any of this and I'm trying to make the best out of a bad situation and sometimes it backfires in my face. But sometimes I think that we go through things to assist other people because the amount of the amount of people that you're seeming to help now Mm -hmm. through the blogs and stuff yeah if you hadn't gone through this you would never have helped them yeah you would never have been in contact with them yeah if i wasn't a barber i wouldn't have spoke to the thousands of people i've probably spoke to over the years yeah um and sometimes that little bit of advice you may never hear from it you may never hear, like one of my regulars the other day, I showed him the back after um, I'd cut his hair. 
And he was like, yeah, yeah, cool. And he was like, do you know what? He says, I go back home and I say to my girlfriend, I'll oh, look at my haircut, it's amazing, this, this, and this. He says, I don't give you enough credit. I says, I don't need the credit. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah, but he says, I just play it off like it's cool. He was like, but it's such a big deal to me when I go home. Oh. But you, you don't know the effect that you have on somebody. Yeah, no, I know. So you may write something in your blog that that person may never reach out to you, but you've really done them a favor. Yeah. But if you hadn't gone through what you've gone through, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like maybe God sends us things which are going to hurt us, but the difference between you and me as opposed to some other people is uh, other people may not have been able to do what we do. Yeah. And they say that um, God gives you what he knows you can handle. Yeah. Well. So, so some people some people can't handle it, but I sometimes believe that they give in a bit too easy. Like us doing, um, when we train for our, um, our black belts in our jiu-jitsu club, we go through um, a lot of, um stamina and physical training um not so much techniques but um different stuff to endure that three four hours of the black belt grading Mm -hmm. and our sensei says to us your body can handle a lot more than your mind believes it can right but if your mind gives up too soon your body won't get there because your mind let go if you just keep saying i'm going to keep going and keep going and keep going you'll go yeah but if your mind decides no fuck it i can't do anymore you're not you're not going to get there do you know what i mean yeah and that's a hundred percent where i was um and i think when i was bad it was a stretch of like two to three weeks in my head and i don't know if i've wrote this in my blogs i think i have um Oh, when I was obviously pregnant, I was going through the worst of it. Um, and the only thing at one point that kept me going was I said I was telling myself, right, all you have to do is get to the birth. And once the baby's here, you can kill yourself you, and you can end it. You said that. I was going to touch on that. You, um, so number 15 was the truth uncovered, mm-hmm. um, which I found pretty disturbing and upsetting to be honest yeah um you talked about fainting and yes falling apart from the stress from phone calls of threats by various people yeah and then number 16 which i know is here um was maternal mental awareness yeah this one actually no lie made me tear up because so you talked about um, feeling of abandonment. Yeah. Destroyed you. Yes. Um, during the pregnancy, you wanted to wait until after the baby was born to safely end your life. And I remember you said this was the bit that got me was you were in the bath crying and you messaged your sister Athena. Yes. And said. Yeah. When the baby's born. Yeah. And I remember that moment like it was literally yesterday. That fucked me up when I read it because I was like, fuck. Just because I knew you were going through a bad time, but that was that was deep. And um, it's that's a hard pill to swallow. And thanks to God, you um, once the baby was born, I know you mentioned that everything changed straight away. Yeah. But going through that, your thought process was, I just need to get this pregnancy out of the way. Yeah, so, um, yeah, um, it, I think the reason I got to that place was because um, what had happened was, obviously the breakup had happened, um, and a week before, no, it was April, so, okay, a month before I gave birth, Um, I got a text off a friend that I know um, through football. He was another footballer. Right. And he said to me, have you heard the news? And still to this day, when a random person messages me, I always think I'm going to hear bad news. So it gives me like literally heart palpitations. And I said, what news? And he said, oh, I'm shocked you don't know. I said, just get to the point. 
And he said to me, the person that came out in the newspaper about the Valentine's Day thing when I right. caught somebody else in the house is pregnant. Right. So I was like, no, 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 this, this can't be, okay. this can't be right. So obviously, as girls do, you go on social media, you try and find as much as you can. Did you know her? No, she's from America. Right, okay. I didn't know her. I knew who she was. I didn't know okay. her personally. Um, so I'd messaged, obviously, Gosta's dad. I messaged him and I said, is this true? And he said, what? No, like he made out he had no clue. Okay. Um, so I thought it can't be true then. She can't be pregnant and he's not going to know. Like, Jesus, like that doesn't happen. And then I started putting two together, two and two together. And I, from go, from going on her social media, I'd managed to find her a friend. And it said on one of the captions, Chelsea's baby shower. Right. So I was like, no, 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 no. This, this can't be true. And I think the worst thing was at that point as well, in my mind, I was thinking as soon as the baby's born, he's definitely going to be back. Like our family's going to be complete. Right. So that completely killed all my hope. Right. Okay. It made me feel like, a, you know, a baby mom. Like I wasn't considered. I was just another woman that's just had another child. Right. Um, and it got to the point where I just said to myself, I can't do this. I can't live a life of, you know, having uh, my son, having a sister from a woman that broke my family. There's no way I'd ever let my son be around that, right. yeah. be around her. Um, and yeah, so it did get to the point where I f fully believed and, and this is the scary thing when I think back to it, it actually terrifies me that I actually, in my head, said to myself, right, all you've got to do is wait until the baby. And the sick thing is, that's made me happy. The thought of me ending my right. life was really made me happy because I thought I don't have to deal with this anymore. Right. I don't have to deal right. with the pain. The pain's all going to be over. Right, which is probably what the people that do um get actually, to that point the people that do actually do it that's what they think yeah and i think you said before it's not so much that they want to die no it's they just want, want to end the pain yeah yeah there's no way i want it i've never i you know i've had a, a good life up to now i'm not gonna sit here and say that i haven't had a good life i've been very fortunate to have things that i've had very fortunate to meet the people that i've met the memories that i've made and whatever um i haven't had a bad childhood at all um but it's scary that any type of person like it doesn't matter how many friends you've got how big your bank balance is, how little your bank balance is, etc. where you live, the size of your house, whatever. It, ultimately, everybody's got feelings and it's scary to think that when I've had such a good life that just within a click, it can all change. And what made me happy at that moment was the thought of ending my life. Yeah, yeah. And when I talk about it, I'm just like, number one, I don't recognise that person anymore. Good. And number two, it's just, it, it it's mind blowing. Like I, and I wasn't even scared that right. not one part of me was scared. Right. Which is even more terrifying. Yeah. I was, I was going to say that's terrifying because when I've heard about, um, so there was that guy from, uh, Love Island that committed yeah. suicide and what I find scarier about them kind of ways that they do it when they actually go somewhere and hang themselves as opposed to an overdose which you could do at home yeah is he's setting it up he's planning it and he's making that journey to get there just to do that yeah what the fuck is going on in there it's heads? like adrenaline but if you're saying that you were thinking along those lines and you weren't scared that is, that's disturbing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because I thought that people would be terrified the whole way through, but if you're not. I wasn't, obviously I didn't get to the point where I tried. No. Um, but the thought of me doing it didn't scare me whatsoever. Okay. I had, um, 
it it was one of them ones when I when I started like trying to think different. So it wasn't until I'd say like within two weeks that I started thinking, okay, um, you know, whilst you sit around like, and that's when I kind of discovered Tony Robbins and whatever, and I started watching the videos, reading the books, and all of that. It wasn't until then that um, I've lost my thing. What I was about to say then. What was I going to say? That thing. My mind's just gone blank. So I'm thinking about that moment and it's completely threw me off. Um, but but that... That was your lowest low, for sure. Must have been. Yeah. Right. That's what I was going to say. I would sit in my bed and my head would be telling me, it's okay, you're going to end it. But then my conscience was telling me, don't do it. And there were so many moments I would sit in my my room and I'd be bawling my eyes out and I'd be hitting my head like this. Stop, 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 stop. And I would hold myself and I'd be screaming, saying, stop, stop, stop. Because the thoughts were overwhelming. Um, Yeah, I think that is that's the kind of stuff that drives people insane yeah and how because people could hear your story and say well so what so many people go through that big deal Mm -hmm. but they haven't been through it and also even though it's what you've been through is technically quite common it's that's your thing that's yeah it's not common to you no absolutely not and um anybody going through it it doesn't matter how many other people have been through it it's still real life to you yeah how you didn't go insane with the stuff that you're telling me i think is um is a blessing from God because I can't think of any other reason why you hadn't lost the plot. Like, mm, I mean, not long after, obviously I gave birth. Um, and like you say, any mom that's first had a baby, you know, like your life completely changes within a click. You've got this brand new baby and everything's so exciting and whatever. Um, and then I think until the baby didn't get to about two months, then the depression started to come back a little bit. Okay. Um, because your life has completely changed. You know, you can't do what you want to do at all. You, um, you know, um, you don't sleep. You can't think. You just, that, your mind's everywhere. Is that um, just a a thing of being a parent anyway? Um, oh. Yeah, obviously a newborn, you don't sleep, period. Oh, like for the oh, first away however from, long. Away from your personal problems. But then I had my added personal problems. Right. Um, things started to get better um, around August. Um, I how, kept... How old was Gusta at that point? August, so May, uh, June, July, I got three months. Okay. Um, so... Um, Sorry, before things started to get better, a bit before. So I'd say mid July, um, I kept saying to him the, that other baby was born at this point. Right. And because she's American, she was actually living in his house okay. because the baby needed a British passport. Right. Um, and I kept, sa- I don't know why, I feel like my gut feeling has never let me down. Right. I'm quite. Um, my intuition is quite high. Right. And for some reason, my gut kept telling me that child isn't his. There's no chance that child is his because everything he was telling me around the dates, just nothing made sense whatsoever. So I said to him, have you done a DNA test? And he said to me, no. I said, well, you should do a DNA test. Right. At this point, we started getting closer. We started considering getting back together. Right. Um, maybe that's what picked me up. Maybe, you know, everything I ever wanted was starting to come together. I retold my parents, my family, uh, and it was going well. Um, and then he surprised me one day. He called me and he said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. 
and he was like, I've got really good news. I need to come to you straight away. He didn't tell me over the phone. I had no idea what he was about to tell me. So I was like, okay. Comes to the house and he just passes me a piece of paper. And I was like, what's this? And I read it. And at the bottom, it said, there is 0% that that child is wow. yours. Okay. So I was like, oh my God, like everything I've been through was worth it. It's all, you know, it's all coming together now. We can start a complete fresh new page. She's never going to be in our lives again, blah, 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 blah. Um, And yeah, like it was good for about three weeks. And then something else happened, which I don't need to go into because it's not relevant. Okay. Um, But yeah, so the child wasn't his. Um, and yeah, but that's, that, that's where we're at. It's very like, so there we was, get on and then. So there was always, happens. there was always a little bit of hope somewhere along the line that just, you just get into that point and then you'd see from there. Yeah. And then even if something changed, it changed for a while, bad or good. And then you'd wait until the next thing. Yeah. So. And that's where I'm at still. Right. But at least there was always something to kind of cling on to for a little while. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Now I wouldn't say that that's the reason why I think mentally I did that myself. Like I am in a much better place in terms of I cannot remember the last time I had a suicidal thought. Right. And I absolutely plan on never having those thoughts again. Right. Not that anybody plans to, but you know. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, so mentally I'd say I did that myself. But in terms of hope, I wouldn't say that what I cling on to him is what keeps me going. I just think... But it did at the time. But it did at the time. And now I'm in a position where I'm like, I do prefer it when we get on because I just think, why can't we have a good life and just get on? Yeah. We don't have to be together. Yeah, we can just for get sure. on for yeah. our, our, our child. Yeah, you know, just... it's it's me that had to do all the forgiving and I feel like I have forgiven you. But the problem is, I think he hasn't forgiven himself and the and which is why we're at where we are. Um, and when somebody keeps running away from their problems, keep running away from their problems, um, nothing ever gets dealt with. It just gets thrown under the rug. Yeah, because... But... <laughs> Sometimes people are like, oh, I feel shit for whatever reason. I need to get away. I need to go and do something different. I need to move. I need to leave the country. Yeah. But the problems are in your head. So you could could fly to Australia. And I say this all the time. You fly to Australia with the same head that you had in the UK. And there you are with the same problems you in australia you, yeah i know you didn't nothing and, nothing and, and, was yeah achieved. and a lot of people have said to me i feel like you need a holiday for like you need to get away and i said to them truly i want a holiday when i feel so much better in myself so i can fully enjoy right. it right yeah, yeah i don't want to be on a beach and i'm sat there thinking why aren't i good enough yeah why is he with her and not me because why do you know what i mean because your problems follow you around you try and get away and there you are with yeah. with that problem. And I've always been a believer of whether I want to f- admit the truth or I don't, the truth of the matter is that's what it is. And yeah. you have to face it. Yeah. If you're scared of a bully, the only way that you're going to ever get over it is if you face that bully. Yeah. Only. That's the only way. And sometimes the bully is the voice in your head. But you have to face it and get in a different, I don't know, a different situation. It's still there. And what happens if you don't solve the problem and it kind of subsides, it becomes an insecurity. Yeah. And it's always going to be there. It might not be as strong, but it's always going to be that voice in your head. Mm -hmm. Always. So unless you fight it, defeat it, it's going to be some kind of a problem. Yeah. Whether it's a conscious one or a subconscious one, it's yeah. always going to be a problem. So it doesn't matter where you go. Um, yeah. So you can't, uh, the best thing that I'd say to anybody is just admit the fucking truth and deal with it. Yeah. As as, as bad as it's, as you can as yeah, well. Yeah. As bad as it sounds, there's no, there's no shortcut. You, you can't get somebody else to, 
do it for you. No. You've got to do it. And that and, and that's again with the whole quick fix thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everything is so easily easily accessible now. I can press a button and you know, and something can be sent to me within the day now. Yeah. And I think people have accustomed to, to that whole thing where everything's really here now and whatever but when it comes to your emotions it's not a quick fix it's absolutely not you do have to go through the motions completely you have to go up you know up the ups and the downs right. and and it will only that i think there's a reason that you go through something that something's going to happen to me sooner or later and everything's going to make sense whether yeah, it's yeah, it. whether it's him sorting his head out me me and somebody completely new and better and you know everything was worth it because i've got the a life that i completely wanted whatever the reason is at some point in all our lives i think it's going to be like oh yeah, yeah. that's why it yeah, happened yeah. i think in the grand scheme of things you'll look back um so in Two weeks, two weeks today, I'm going to be 29. When I was, I left school 13 years ago. So I was just about to turn 16. And I thought in the next 10 years, because you're very um, naive mm. in your younger years. I thought in the next 10 years, bear in mind, I didn't even know I wanted to be a barber when I left school. Mm. I thought I'm going to have my own business. Didn't know what, because I didn't know what I wanted yeah, to do. Yeah. But us being Greek and... Our families have all got their own businesses. Yeah. You just assume that's what's going to yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. So I thought at 25, 26, I'll have my own business. I'll have my own house. I'll, if I'm not married, I'll be close. I could potentially have kids, but I don't know. Yeah. All these things. And now, and I remember when I got to 10 years on from leaving school, the only thing I owned was my mobile phone. Yeah. I still lived at home. I was still single. And that's was something unhappy. that Tony Robbins speaks about a lot. And it's the blueprint. They're like, we've all got our own blueprint. Right. So we've all got this idea of how we want our life to be. And the only reason that stress and anxiety comes about is because we aren't living up to what we think we should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, in my head, when it all happened to me, I was like, well, I'm engaged and I've got this baby. Next year, I'm going to be married. We're going to live this amazing life. And when it didn't happen how I wanted it to happen, boom, my life's all gone. My life's all gone pear-shaped. My life is just a mess. And it's so true with what he says. It's like, if we didn't have such a strong blueprint. Right. And I think in our cultures as well, it's a little bit harder because we have pressures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, added yeah. like cultural blueprint, yeah, which is yeah. what he calls it. Um, maybe if we didn't have such strong beliefs and strong whatever it is, then would we suffer the way that we do? Probably not. And what was what was funny was, so 10 years, 10 years later, the only thing I own is a fucking mobile phone. And I was... I used to lease a car, which I'd given back because the lease had finished. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to buy a nice car, but I needed to save money because when you give a lease car back, you haven't got shit at the end of it. Yeah. So then I was driving a beat up thousand pound Ford Fiesta at 25, 26 years old, which wasn't doing anything for my ego. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, I'm unhappy. I was a barber at that point, but I was still working in my parents' um, takeaway as well. I was working uh, six days a week. and I, But then within two years, two years after that, about 18 months after that, I end up buying a car I've always dreamed of having. I end up um, given an opportunity to buy this place, which I was going to own my own property and have my own business. All these things that I wanted, apart from being in a relationship, which again, um, it happens when it happens, all these things I wanted came, but they just came a little bit later. Yeah, but do you think there's a reason why they came? For sure, because um, I, I was saying how one of my regrets is that all of this that I've got with the barbershop, with the property, um, having the freedom to be confident enough to podcast all this kind of stuff which makes me so happy now i wish i'd done before but the opportunity wasn't there before yeah. so it wouldn't have worked yeah the the uh the man that i bought this property off was virgin on 75 
and he retired. Five years ago or three years ago when I wish I did it, he wasn't willing to retire. So the opportunity wasn't there. Yeah. So if I got a shop somewhere else, maybe it wouldn't have worked. Yeah. You know, but in the grand scheme of things, you look back and think, why did I pressure myself yeah, so much? I was young as fuck. I've got you. Do you know, and I'm still, I'm still below 30. Yeah. So what does it matter? But again, you've just put a thing 30, which I think, and I saw something in, uh, on Facebook the other day, I was scrolling through Facebook. I don't really go on Facebook, but scrolling through Facebook and there was a link and there, the link was, I clicked onto it and it was a woman that had just turned 30 and she committed suicide because she was 30 and she didn't, she wasn't married and she didn't have kids. Fucking hell. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I think everybody's got, I think a lot of people have got that benchmark at 30. Like, oh, well, as long as I'm married and got kids you by need, 30. You feel as like long you need to have got, your shit Do you know together. what I mean? Right, but I right. just feel like 30 today is so young compared to how 30 was maybe 20 years yeah. ago. So I, I speak to a lot of old men um, when I'm cutting their hair. And when you're 60, 70, 80... I say to them sometimes, I say, what were you doing at my age? And they ask me how old I am and I tell them and they laugh because they're, like, they're basically saying to me, you're young as fuck. You right. don't know shit. Right. And it's true at that age. And looking back when we were 18, 19 and we thought we fucking knew it all. Oh, absolutely not. And you look back and you think, you stupid idiot. Mm-hmm. You absolute dick. What we, we had no idea. No. And every year that passes we learn about that even more. So what I thought was necessary five years ago isn't necessary anymore. Yeah. You know, but it's very hard to not um, race against the... Clock. Well, race against what you thought, where you thought you needed to be. Yeah. Like, Your own blueprint. Yeah, like I said, I didn't have what I wanted at 25, 26 but now at 28, 29. You've got it. I'm pretty much there. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I'm just getting started. So it doesn't matter. Age isn't a thing to me now. Yeah. But my point is we do eventually get there. Yeah. It might be a little bit later than we want it to be, but mm -hmm. we get there. Yeah. Um, and as you get older, you think, and this is what I was going to say to you before, as you get older, these little bad days that you have or bad weeks, which at the time going through it is a problem. You look back and think, fucking hell, it was only a couple of years or it was only a couple of weeks or whatever. Mm. Big deal. Mm. When you're 60 years old, I went through what I thought was shit times, really shit times at the time I was going through them. And now I vaguely remember them being shit times. I can't even remember why I had them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it is one of them things as well is that life actually is short and it's um, it's a shame to waste so much time on bad things. Like today when I was at work, I was putting a date through the thing and I put 18 at the end and I was like, hold on, it's not 2019. But for me, 2018 was just all bad memories. Right. So I don't, I don't apart from obviously my son being born, right. which was the best memory. Yeah. yeah. 2018, I don't have one memory other than Gosta being born and anything to do with Gosta that I can store in my head as right. being like, that was amazing. Right. And it's like, I wasted a whole year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I was, I was very unhappy for a lot of years. And like I said, it's only been since September when I opened the business that I'm truly, truly content with my life. And I was 28 and I thought everything before that was like, I, I didn't have the worst time, but I wasn't that happy. Yeah. And you think, fucking hell, I wasn't that happy because I wanted this. Now I've got it. I, I got it. Yeah. Why, why was I feeling like that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Beating yourself up about something that eventually is going to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so it it's hard because you don't want to waste you don't want to waste time, but 
at the same time. You've just got to let things flow as well. You can't obviously micromanage every part of your life. You've just got to let things be. And I think when you're a little bit like me, I'm kind of like a perfectionist in everything. I want to sort things out and whatever. And when you can't control a situation, that's when your anxiety gets worse. That's when your stress gets worse because it's like, well what can I do? You actually can't do anything. Right. You just need to leave, yeah. leave things be, yeah. you know? So when I see my friends getting married or proposals or engagements or whatever, I'm like, that was my life and I don't have it anymore. Yeah. Will I ever have that? Yeah. Will I ever have that happiness again? Yeah. Will I forever be on my own? Yeah. You know, will my gosh, they have brothers and sisters. Yeah. Everything I imagined going on in my life hasn't happened apart from obviously... I'd always say, oh, I want kids before 30. Well, yeah. you know, you've got your son, but yeah. just not, not in the, the way, way that yeah, you wanted yeah. it to, yeah. you know? So, Sometimes it's that be careful. And I'm, not, and I'm not stupid. I'm not sat there saying I'm never going to meet somebody because I, I hopefully I, I will. But it's just like, when? You know, like, when, when's we, all this going to happen? I think we all go through that. I mean, um, but again, I, I wanted to meet somebody but i wasn't ready before you know there was there was a time that i was speaking on and off with somebody and it didn't work out but at the time i was training for six months between five and seven days a week for my last black belt that i got i was trying to sort buying this property out which busted my balls way more than it should have mm. i was trying to sort everything out to open the business trying to transform um, this property from being a shithole into what I've got now. Yeah. All these things. Yeah. Plus working six days a week. Yeah. And working wages, which weren't the best. At what point was I going to have time for somebody else? So. It's just nice though to know, like when you get home and you lie in your bed, you've got that person yeah, to speak for, to. For sh- for sure. And I think that's what I miss the most, yeah, yeah, yeah. having my best yeah, friend. It, it's, that, it's that connection and that bond. That's yeah. what I think everybody craves. But sometimes it's just the timing isn't right no and i think the more annoying thing is you think when is the time going to be right but again you just gotta fucking wait and see don't you mm-hmm. and because of that you can't beat yourself up about it because it, it comes back to the same thing of when it does happen you'll be like okay finally what was yeah I, what was i stressing about yeah because yeah, it did yeah, happen yeah, yeah. you know mm. um so what now are your personal goals seen as you're in a much better place um i think right now my personal goals are to keep focusing on myself um in terms of keep getting better because i'm not going to say i've completely left the depression phase because i haven't um and i think any person that's been through depression knows that it doesn't just go, even when you're feeling so much better, it doesn't just go. You just have a lot more better days right. than than you used to. Um, so, yeah, I'm just f- completely focusing on myself, on the baby, um, and a personal little, I don't want to call it a goal. Well, it is a goal. It's just to get out more and socialise right. yeah. because... I absolutely don't. Yeah, yeah. Like, the other, I only leave the house if I'm going to work and yeah. that's it. Do you have time? Do you have time? To go out? Yeah. Not really. Mm. And I need to kind of... Prioritise. Yeah, for me, because my baby's only going to get the best version of myself if I'm happy. For sure. So, yeah. And another thing is just to obviously build my self-confidence up completely because I feel like when any, whenever anybody's truly sure of themselves, there's no way that they'd deal with certain things or settle for certain things or be disrespected in any certain way. So I just really need to remind myself who the fuck I am, literally, yeah. Yeah. Um, and start, don't waste any more time. That's my problem. Yeah. I have a problem of just sitting around and thinking that everything's going to get done for me. Exactly. Like you said, a bit like the law of attraction, but I don't actually believe it's all going to turn up on my doorstep, but I just feel like, Oh, it's okay. You don't need to do anything today, tomorrow, but it's not, you know? Um, so yeah, that is, it's mainly just about me and just building myself back up again. I mean, I mean, I, I always feel like the worst thing in the world is wasting time. Mm -hmm. That's why like I won't, 
I won't tolerate people wasting my time anymore. Yeah. Because I can't get that back. Yeah, exactly. That's like, the, the worst thing. Yeah, time. Like if you want to be a wanker about things, fine. But don't waste my time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that kind of wraps up. So there was a few final questions that I had, um, which I was going to say, what are you looking to gain out of life now? But that's that pretty much sums up, I guess, what you were what you were saying. Um, if you could do anything for a career, anything you wanted, like it didn't matter about money, education, that kind of stuff, what would you do? Uh, I think I'd be a psychiatrist. Really? Yeah. I think I'd want to help people and let people like kind of come in, in into my kind of safe place and help people and, and talk to them and whatever. But obviously that's a whole load of 10 years at uni and I have zero time for that. Or you could be a barber because that's what we do. Okay, well, <laughs> or there's that. Um, but yeah, no, I do, I do think I would. And I've always had this vision of like having my own spa. So okay. like people just come and just really let go and yeah. chill out yeah. and zone out and whatever. But obviously I'm not financially able to do that so that's one of them but hopefully in the future who yeah. knows cool and the last one i think you've you questioned people about this on your instagram in the past but i'm going to give it back to you what advice would you give 18 year old steph Oh, well, 18-year-old Steph was in another situation then that I thought <laughs> we all know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, my God. I would just, like, go with the flow. Like, I think at 18 years old, there's no way you can be in a relationship at 18 years old because you don't even know yourself. Right. Um, and stop stressing about stupid things. Enjoy your life now that you can. And I think when you do get older and you have kids and you've got these more responsibilities, you think back and you think, I wasted so much when I, I could do whatever I wanted. I didn't have responsibilities yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like you said, the only responsibility you've got is paying for your phone bill. And even then, I don't yeah. think I did. I think my dad paid for my phone bill at that age. Right. Um, and yeah, like just enjoy life and it's nice to be young and don't be so quick to grow up. Don't be so quick to want to, you know, set all your foundations down at such a young age. Like just enjoy, 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 like in, yeah, just enjoy. That's all I can say because I, I think those are the best times of your life. And But you're so um, worried about oh, I'm not doing this, oh, I'm not doing that, oh, he doesn't like me, he doesn't like me. The person you're worrying about, you won't know in five years' time. <laughs> yeah, true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for you sure. know, the person that I was crying about now has got two kids and married. Yeah. Like, uh, we're not together. We yeah. don't even speak to him. Yeah. And if I did see him, I'd be like, hi, how are you? Like, it's not, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's not that deep. No, absolutely not. But it is what it is, I suppose. I mean, I thought I would have learned from that one, but obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I want to, thank you for coming on because we did go a bit further than what you've gone through on your blogs mm -hmm. um so i appreciate it i appreciate the time um just i will put the links in the description on youtube but um if you want to contact steph or if you want to read the blogs um the links on her instagram stefania c that's stefania with three eyes just mm -hmm. to put that out just there just so i'm extra <laughs> like that um the blog's called first time mommy dot blog um steph what is your title at nuvo a managing director okay so steph's the managing director of nuvo in brindley place in birmingham um I don't know what you'd class it as. Is it a bar? Is it a club? Is it a restaurant? It's absolutely all three of those. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's fine. So um, you can check that out at Nouveau Birmingham on Instagram. Steph, to quote yourself, ooh, you've got this. And we got this as well. Safe. Um, guys, stay tuned and you'll see me soon. Yeah.